Good day to you, ex-communists, and let's all celebrate the return of Splice Strategies. Yay. Yay! Welcome to Munich, Germany, where those wacky aliens are at it again and are attacking yet another construction site. Why do they hate construction so much? What is the strategic value of these buildings? Then again, these are abduction missions, so maybe they don't hate construction as much as they just have development plans and need construction workers of their own. No better way to get cheap labor than to simply Shanghai the workers you need. The title of the operation is Sparkly Punch, so in the name of the moon we will punish these aliens for kidnapping the hopes and dreams of something or other and magic and love and stuff, whatever. Look, the point is, XCOM has seen fit to give us a gift and start us off rather close to a meld canister. But if there's anything that we've learned from XCOM, it's to look every gift horse in the mouth. In fact, I think I should make that an axiom. See, there we go. So we use Jimmy's battle scanner just to be sure that there are no baddies waiting in ambush. Strangely, there aren't. Still, it seems fishy. So we send the party up to get ready for any funny business. Moving Citrus Architect up, we find out that, oh, ho, ho, there's some funny business. That floating disc you see there is Centronus. Let's see what the Pokedex has to say about him. Centronus, the cyber disc Pokemon the evolved form of Dronus. Centronus is a steel and flying type. This Pokemon is like a turret from Aperture Science. If that turret could fly, throw grenades, and had dreadlocks. In addition to having more guns than Neo and Trinity during the lobby shootout, Centronus has twice the hit points of a Muton and crit chance is reduced by 60%. In short, Centronus is one bad mofo that will mess you up if given the chance. Good luck and have fun. Wow, is it just me or has the Pokedex gotten a lot more street over the years? All Jokemon aside, Centronuses are just plain mean. This one opted to go into Overwatch rather than move to cover, so we can't advance on it but it can also lob grenades, so we can't bunch up on it. Our best option for taking it down is DJ Sucre, yeah. because he has the Heat Ammo perk, which gives him 50% more damage against Steel types, I mean robots. So we want to take down both of the Dronuses and then focus fire down the Centronus as it advances. Gemini Spark does his part, but despite having two shots at it, Evil lemmy -san can't bring down the 343 Guilty Spark lookalike. We then make a mistake. I don't like how Citrus Architect is so far forward and behind destructible cover, so I move him back to where I think the Centronus won't be able to see him. It's a mistake because if the Centronus decides to shoot a grenade at Gemini Spark, there is a chance Citrus might get hit with the grenade despite not being seen. Luckily for us, the Centronus and Dronus really don't like that we have a Steel type on our team and try to focus fire him down. But Gemini Spark used double team and thus is really hard to hit. So we got lucky that it didn't decide to use a grenade, but we can't count on that luck twice. You'd think with both of these targets out in the open, they'd be easy shots for us, but because they're flying, our odds are in the crapper. Gemini Spark though has an aimbot module, so never tell him the odds. Jimmy on the other hand, well, it's time for more trick shot shenanigans with 06 Jimmy. In this segment, shooting a Dronus, under Gemini's armpit, and over the lip of the dumpster. Can Jimmy hit the shot? Indeed she can. A cheer for Jimmy. Yay. Yay. Now, I could take a bunch of bad shots, but I instead opt for overwatches, as the Centronus doesn't have good sight lines and, thus, will likely want to move. And while they won't likely be any good shot chances, it can't be any worse than the ones we currently have. As luck would have it though, the Centronus does move, and Evil Emmy saw me say it again, but DJ Sucre uses heat ammo. It's super effective! With the Centronus retreating to low ground, that means if we can get line of sight to it, we should have a decent shot. The problem is that in order to do so, we'll have to move the team around. Now, I've heard the growlings of mutons and the cacklings of floaters in the fog of war, so we need to be very careful. First thing I do is move Jimmy to this door and open it. The trailer here has lots of windows, so any aliens that the team sees will likely grant her squad sight. After that, I shuffle the team around and Evil Emison finds the Centronus by the Earth Mover. She finally has a decent shot, so she takes it and finishes it off. It tries to use self-destruct before it expires, but fortunately none of us were close enough to get caught in the explosion. 
With no more targets, we press forward towards the other meld, but Gemini's subtle movements reveal the floaters we heard earlier. Gemini decides this floater shouldn't have cover, and thus clears it out with collateral damage. And that opens up an easy firing lane for Shiosk, who breaks the glass like a bala and drops the floater like a bad habit. Now, Shiosk is our lone support, so we definitely want him to level up. Well, we get him a 90% flank shot here, which he promptly misses. It takes a true hipster to miss a shot 9 out of 10 people can hit. It's not cool if anyone can do it. Now, I want the floater to keep shooting at Gemini as he has more hit points, so I move Gemini to the left slightly, putting Shiosk and Jimmy in range of his distortion field. Then, to get an additional 15 defense, I put Gemini into Overwatch so that he gains the extra defense provided by his automated threat assessment perk. But if he takes an Overwatch shot, he's going to lose that bonus, and this is the time the Mutons decide to show up. Gemini hits his Overwatch shot, which is more than I can say for Evil Emmy song. And then more floaters decide to show up on the left side, but Jimmy has that side covered with her pistol. The problem is Gemini no longer has his extra 15 defense, and with all our overwatches spent, the original floater's free to move to cover and add some burn marks to Gemini's hull. Now, for some reason, the Muton here seemed to think that this was a good hiding spot, and while Emi-san does miss her first shot, there's no way she's going to miss both shots on a target this big and this flanked. Now, I do make a mistake here. I misclick and accidentally have Jimmy reload her nearly full sniper rifle. Given how accurate she is, and the fact that she has the perk double tap, that likely was a mistake that cost me two easy kills. But whenever you misclick, while it can be disheartening, you have to move forward. Speaking of which, I move Shiosk forward and take a coin flip shot against this floater who can easily flank a lot of our men. But Shiosk misses. Luckily, DJ Sucre has an alien grenade, which does four damage, which is exactly what we need to put an end to this alien. On the alien's turn, one floater decides to relocate to our right flank while the other opts to suppress DJ Sucre. The remaining Muton elects to hang back in the shadows, so it's pretty safe to assume he's overwatching. For that reason, we move Emi-san first, both to reveal him and to guarantee he misses since she has lightning reflexes. Now that we know where the Burly Brood is, we move Citrus Architect up and show this Muton why you don't play peekaboo with someone hefting a laser shotgun. This floater is as good as dead with Jimmy having line of sight to him, but we want to try and get a promotion for Shiosk. So he takes another coin flip shot, and this time the coin lands on headshot. That just leaves the last floater who tried to take our flank. Unfortunately for him, Gemini can move right next to him and plant his railgun against his temple. And anytime a railgun is pressed against your temple, it's not going to end well for you. So ends Operation Sparkly Punch. No magical girl showed up, we made a lot of minor mistakes, but in the end, no one's going to the medical bay, we captured 10 more melds, and we got to make a mock Pokédex entry. I think we'll go ahead and label this as a good mission. In the promotions front, despite missing 4 of her 6 shots, 05 Bonsai Evil Emisan is now a captain. And like Citrus Architect before her, she'll be taking the so useful I'm always going to take it close combat specialist. With nothing else to do in base management, we just scan and the foundry completes. The foundry provides us with some expensive but awesome projects that can really boost our soldiers' combat capabilities. Unfortunately, we only had 117 double space credits left. So we go to the gray market to sell what few exalt weapons we have left and a few corpses. We then get this very odd aside from Officer Sweater Vest. This is Central. I'm receiving you. What do you mean you think you saw a snake? What the hell does that have to do with anything? Hey, uh, Sweater Vest, you left your mic on all talk. I think you meant that communication for a private channel? See what I have to deal with here, people? Now, we have some extra scratch. I start up tactical rigging, which will give all of our soldiers two item slots apiece. If it weren't for the fact that it's so dang expensive to get, that would be absolutely broken. Now, seeing as we just went on a mission, I decided to gamble a little bit. I want Jimmy to get the amazing gene mod, Muscle Fiber Density, which lets her jump up and down buildings like a thin man. It's an amazing way to get your snipers up on a perch, but she'll be out three days if we do that. But the odds that we get a mission in those three days is probably low. 
Why do I care if Jimmy misses a mission? Well, for one, she's our most decorated soldier and clearly the leader of the team. But there's also an achievement called Ain't No Calvary Coming, when a soldier has to be in every mission and survive them throughout the entire game. Jimmy has been in every mission so far, and thus my first soldier to have a chance at the achievement. So being out for three days is a risk, but I think it's a low risk because, again, we just got off a mission. Commander, the council is requesting your attention. Secure transmission coming in now. Oh, of course the council has a mission for us now. Oh, had they just waited a few more days, we would have had Jimmy's genes spliced and tactical rigging done. Instead, we're gonna have to do a bomb disposal mission without her. Ain't no cavalry coming indeed. More like ain't no achievements coming. Stupid Lex Luthor. Legion Doom doesn't want us little guys to get any of the achievements. With Jimmy in the gene tank, it's time for Adrian Rod to actually be used as a sniper, and not just for covert ops. So we let her borrow Jimmy's laser rifle, scope, and armor, pile into the Sky Ranger that I think looks a lot like the fighter transports of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the new Captain America film, and head off to Rosario, Argentina for our bomb disposal mission. Huh. Apparently Argentina is not just under bomb threats, but DDoS attacks. I'm not sure what they did to piss off 4chan, and judging by the mission title, neither do they. In any case, join us next week as we take on the forces of alien invaders and the internet hate machine as we try to defuse an explosive situation in Operation Anonymous Curiosity. Until then, I'm Splice, and we are XCOM. We do not forgive, we do not forget. Expect us to frustrate commanders everywhere by missing high percentage shots.